Data and the Borg Queen totally had sex, and other secrets from Star Trek First Contact. IGN just did another watch from home theater for Star Trek First Contact, and wouldn't you know it, Jonathan Frakes, number one himself, the director of Star Trek First Contact, joined us. Jonathan's live commentary wound up being pretty eye-opening. He gave us new insight into the making of the first big screen adventure for the Enterprise E and the Next Generation crew. There's a link to the full commentary track in the description, so check that out. But here's the coolest, most interesting stuff Frakes revealed. I love Nick. this movie! I am the beginning, the end. One of the highlights of First Contact is the dynamic between Brent Spiner's beloved android Data and Alice Krieger's sexy slash creepy Borg Queen. Was that good for you? They eventually kiss after Data in a throwback to his line when he and Lieutenant Tasha Yar, um, got together in season one of TNG. I am fully functional. The scene then cuts away, but we had to ask Frakes. After this, are we to assume that they had sex after this scene? I was there any discussion of that on set? Did, I mean, between the actors and, and you, and like, it's like just so we're clear. Yes. Frakes reunited with his longtime colleague and friend Sir Patrick Stewart when he directed two episodes of Star Trek: Picard season one, Absolute Candor, and Stardust City Rag. He also returned to the role of Riker in two episodes of the show, and Frakes confirmed during our live stream that he will be back behind the camera for the second season of Picard. Jonathan, will you be back to direct more Picard season two, or is it too early to say? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been asked, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I Great. can't wait to get back to work. It's important to note, this only applies to Frakes' work as a director, not an actor. He didn't say if he'd return to play Will Riker in season two. Will Riker has become well known over the years not only for his great stories as a character, but also that he's kind of a weirdo when it comes to sitting down in a chair like a regular human being. Here's the thing, Jonathan Frakes sits like that in real life too. I do when the chair back is below the danger zone. <laughs> so you do, you do it responsibly. I measured twice and cut once. <laughs> I mean, that started in, in 10 forward because the backs of the chairs in 10 forward were so low. It was easy. And now I thought, this is really a hot dog ass thing to do. Nobody's going to let me do this. And then and then nobody stopped me. It's such a, it's such a cocky, unattractive, kind of bad cowboy move. <laughs> whoever whoever com did the compilation, the YouTube compilation of, of Riker Sits Down... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it just it went viral and it was even more embarrassing. It made me strangely, you know, more proud. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of a spur yeah. of the moment thing you decided to do and nobody told you no. And I didn't think I did it that many times. But boy, when you see that YouTube, it feels <laughs> like it was. Uh, and then it turns out the, the chair in Picard's uh, ready room was just in the right height there to get over that one too. <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart is known for being a courageous leader and top-tier Starfleet captain, but according to Frakes, he keeps in excellent shape and doesn't mind taking us on a one-way trip to the gun show. He like, loves us. Patrick loves to get his clothes off. Yeah. He's so fit. <laughs> yeah. He's still fit. He's he's almost 80 years old and he's he's fit as a fiddle. He's a boxer. But he he must have bulked up for this though. Because, right? I mean, he's got guns. Yeah, no, he's got guns now, man. He's he's fit. <laughs> really? <laughs> he's fucking Captain Picard. <laughs> it's a primitive culture. The long-term love story between Frakes, Will Riker, and Martina Sirtis' counselor Deanna Troy was a crucial part of the next generation, and that's partly because of the backstory Jonathan and Martina baked into their characters from the very start. Marina and I felt that after the beginning, after the pilot of Next Gen, the writers had somehow managed to sweep under the carpet the fact that those two characters had a very strong relationship when the series started that was neglected in a lot of the episode 182 hours of television. Marina and I held on to it. It informed our behavior, it informed us together in scenes, in the group scenes. So everything we did together was informed by the fact that we still loved each other and had a very complicated and we were I, we were empathic and we had a very very conscious effort to keep that alive and maybe we think that helped to inform the beginning of of nemesis 
because it was Nemesis that we got married with. Star Trek First Contact marked the first time Starfleet officers wore these sick new uniforms, but really, everything looks different, including the redesigned Enterprise Bridge aboard the E. This is an all entirely new look for Star Trek. The costumes are new, the ship is new. How involved were you on that level in terms of coming up with what things were going to look like? Yeah, it was, uh, I'm proud to have been part of it. Even my hair is a little bit looser. You like these costumes, these first contact costumes? I thought they were great. And the, I thought, and what, what was cool about it too was and they adopted them on, on uh, Deep Space Nine too. All of a sudden those guys were wearing those costumes. What was the process like of, of designing this new Enterprise and the new bridge? There's been a handful of, of questions asking about uh, even what your favorite bridge has been to work on. I'm crazy about the Discovery Bridge and the alternate universe Discovery Bridge was spectacular. Everybody out there thinks that staying here and fighting the Borg is suicide. What was his favorite scene in the movie? I love this scene. It, it is, it's so dense and so layered and so well thought out and it reveals itself like an onion each time I, I watch it. Can you go into more about why this is your favorite scene? I think the simplicity of the staging, the power of the two actors, and the uh, my appreciation of, of the meeting of, of good acting and good writing and yeah. For more from Jonathan Frakes, watch the full Watch From Home Theater and while you're at it, check out all the hidden secrets of Rogue One that writers Chris Weitz and Gary Witta shared with us. And for everything else, subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.